I've been a photographer for over 25 years and I still struggle to this day because I basically want every single lens out there. I think they're all gonna solve all of my photography problems, but this is far from the truth. However, I have learned quite a few things over the years and I wanna pass these on to you so then you can maybe make a better decision the next time you choose a lens. Now, the first thing to realize is that sometimes, no matter how much research you do and how many of these videos you watch, you will make a bad decision and that's okay. The great thing with lenses is that they do hold their value. Well, to a certain degree anyway. I got this lens recently and it took me a long while to decide on which one to get. And it actually took me a lot longer to save up for it. It's a very specialized lens, but it suits my photography and the way that I shoot. Now this might not be the right lens for you, but this is where photography is so individual and it's great that it's so modular. Depending on where you are in your photographic journey will determine what lens you might need what lens will be good for one person probably won't be good for another person. So for me, being a landscape photographer, I like to have either a telephoto lens or a super wide lens. When I used to shoot portraits and headshots for corporates, I'd have an 85 millimeter, a 50 millimeter and a 35 millimeter prime. You can make the biggest impact on your photographs with the lenses you choose to shoot through. But the hardest thing is to decide on which one to get next. You might want to go for a super wide lens, a prime lens, or a telephoto like this. But nowadays there are so few resources where you can actually go and try those lenses in the environment that you're gonna shoot in. Now you could hire some camera equipment, but what I found is that here in the UK, it's quite expensive. And if you're undecided between three or four lenses, that gets really expensive really quickly. And this will eat into the money that you have to buy that new lens in the first place. So how do you decide? If you're just starting out, you probably don't know what you need. Let's start with that scenario. So you're new to photography and you've got yourself a camera. You'll probably have a kit lens and these are surprisingly good, but not that great. If you have the APS-C crop sensored system, like the Sony A6000, the Canon M50, the Nikon D5600, or maybe the Fuji X-T4, the kit lens normally sits in the range of 16 to 55 millimeters. You'll see this millimeter number on the side of your lens, and this refers to the focal length. All you really need to know is that the smaller the number, the wider the view you'll have to photograph with. And the bigger the number, the more zoomed in it'll be. If you shoot with a full frame system like the Canon EOS R or the Sony A7 series, the kit lens is normally around about 24 to 70 millimeters. Just ask yourself this, what do you want to add to the photos you can already take? Do you want that blurry background look with a shallow depth of field? Are you struggling to get close enough to the things you want to photograph? Or are you struggling to fit everything in your frame even though you're at your widest angle? And what about image quality? Are you disappointed with the results you get from your kit lens or are you okay with it? Some people are and some people want the sharpest possible images with no compromises. These questions will all point you in the right direction. And if you want to go at it at your own pace, you can always pause and rewind the video to go back through the questions. If you're struggling to fit everything into your frame, go for a wider lens, something like the 10 to 18 or the 10 to 20 millimeter for a crop sensored camera, or something like the 16 to 35 millimeter if you shoot with a full frame camera. I love shooting mountain bikers with a super wide angle lens. You can get so much of the environment in the shot and show a sense of movement by slowing the shutter speed. Now, if you're getting into landscape photography and you might have read a blog or watched a video where the person recommended a wide angle lens as your first lens, be really careful. They're great for photographing popular locations, a little bit like this one, but if you're limited with time in hunting for those unique compositions, a wide angle lens isn't always the best for landscape photography. I see it as very much an advanced lens where you've learnt the process of landscape photography and you're really developing the skill and you're spending the time getting those shots. This is when a wide angle lens really comes into its own, but you do have to spend the time in finding those unique shots. It's fine for going to locations that other people have photographed and copying their photographs, but for those truly unique photographs, it's a lot harder with a wide angle lens. If you can't get close enough to your subject, think about how close you need to get. If you shoot wildlife or sports, you probably need something like the 70 to 300, the 100 to 400, or even the 200 to 600, depending on your budget. On the other hand, if the kit lens is almost there, but not quite, if you shoot with a full frame camera, you probably want something like the 70 to 200, or if you shoot with a crop sensored camera, something like the 55 to 200. They both work really well. 
Now, different manufacturers have different ranges, but if you choose something in that range, that'll be a really nice telephoto that'll give you a bit more reach than the lens that you currently have. Now, if you're going to be shooting a lot in low light and you have a decent budget, go for the f 2.8 lenses. But if you shoot things like landscape, then you don't need that. You can go for an f4 lens and save on weight and save on money. Now, if you're a hiker and you want some extra reach, but you don't want the hassle of changing lenses or the extra weight in your bag, the 28 to 200 millimeter from Tamron is a great all rounder, although it is a little bit soft around the edges. Now, talking of image quality, if you're happy with the range that you've got with your kit lens, but are disappointed with the sharpness that you're getting, you just need a higher quality lens with that same range. The L series for Canon cameras, the G Master series for the Sony cameras, or the Nikon FX lenses are the pro range for each of those brands. Once you know how to take a photograph, these will give you better quality images at a price. And sometimes that price is pretty hefty. And whilst we're talking about different lenses, there are different mounting options as well. So make sure you get the right one for the camera that you have. If pro lenses are out of your price range, then look at Tamron or Sigma. These are third-party companies that make lenses for the main brands. They're a lot cheaper and the quality is getting a lot better as time goes by. You also have Samyang, Rokinon and Viltrox as well as a load of other third-party lens manufacturers. But do realize that you don't have to get the pro quality lenses to get pro quality images. If you want great image quality but are on a bit of a budget, go for prime lenses. Prime lenses are lenses that don't zoom, so they only have one millimeter number on them. But because they don't have moving parts in them, like in zoom lenses, they are less complex and will be slightly sharper for the money. On one hand, these will slow down the photography process for you, but on the other hand, they will stretch your photography skills in ways you might not have realized. Now, if you are a beginner and you want something a bit different, you want that blurry background look, but you're struggling to get it with your kit lens, get the 35mm f1.8 if you shoot with a crop sensor, or the 50mm if you shoot with a full frame camera. Now, this look is a little bit overdone with the likes of Instagram, so add it to your repertoire, but don't overdo it. If you're looking to get into event photography, this is where you need speed to get the shots from a super wide to a telephoto. I'd get two full frame camera bodies and a 16 to 35 and a 70 to 200, both at f 2.8. And then I'd get a double shoulder strap so I'd have a camera on each hip so I could get a super wide and then I could get a telephoto in an instant. This is by far the best setup that I've ever used and I've shot with Canon and Sony systems with a 16 to 35 and a 70 to 200. Now that would be an expensive setup, but this is what you need to get when you're shooting in a professional environment for paying customers. Now, if you're on a really small budget and you've spent almost all of your money on your camera, first of all, this is the wrong way to go about it because you need to leave some money to one side for those lenses. But if you have done this, you need to think about vintage lenses. They might not give you the same quality as a modern lens, but they will get you out and shooting with your camera. I got this 50 millimeter F1.4 Prime for around about 40 pounds. Although I think it's a little bit more expensive now. This lens is manual everything, so manual focus and manual aperture. But this will force you to slow down and really think about what you're doing and what you're photographing. You'll learn so much about photography and in the long run, you'll become a much better photographer. Lenses are expensive and sometimes they're more expensive than the camera that you've actually bought. But this is okay because you're paying for quality. What you'll find is you'll go through camera bodies a lot quicker than you'll go through lenses once you've found ones that you really like. When I was a Canon shooter, I had the 70 to 200 f2.8 for around about eight years. and I sold it for around about 500 pounds less than I bought it for. So this is actually not that much money over that much time. It was basically 62 pounds 50 per year, which is ridiculously cheap when you consider hiring that lens would have cost you 50 pounds per day. However, I did have to pay 1,500 pounds when I first got it. So there is that initial cost. I have had my Tamron 17 to 28 for four years and it's still going strong. And this new lens, the 50 to 400, this will last me for years to come as well, probably longer than the a7 IV. Have a look into what photographs you like compared to what photographs you're taking at the moment. Do they use the same focal lengths or do they use ones that are completely different? If they are different, 
do some research, find out what they are, and then maybe invest in one of those lenses. Photography is an expensive hobby and it does take time to build up a good set of lenses that works for you. Now, if beginner Mike was watching this, he'd probably think, well, it's all right for you with all of your fancy kit. But I actually took about 20 years to build the kit up that I've got now. And I went through a lot of changes, a lot of lenses that I didn't want, and a lot of lenses that I didn't need, as well as two brand changes, which is an absolute nightmare but that's a story for another day. Now I've mentioned crop sensor and full frame sensor cameras, but you might be wondering what are the actual differences? And in this video, I take both of those cameras out with me for a real life sunrise shoot and then print the photos from them. And the results are really surprising. I'll see you next time.